Okay, so um, my name is Jacob. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting from Kenya. Uh, I have Antonio Juang and uh, Steve Wanye on the line. They, they have been part of this process. So in Kenya, oh, we are on our third week of, uh, of uh, implementation. Uh, the Ministry of Health uh, reached out to Palladium uh, uh, to help to set up a surveillance system for COVID-19 in Kenya. So uh, <coughs> this is basically what we are putting together. In Kenya, there are um, watch, uh, persons that we call watchers at the points of entry, but also within the community that uh, look out for suspected cases, uh, for possible cases of uh, COVID-19. And then whenever they encounter one, they, they, they alert the uh, EOC, uh, which dispatches a rapid response team that goes to investigate the cases and where the case definition is met, a uh, lab uh, investigation request is done. Um, uh, so uh, this, from this process, the system we have built supports that. Uh, the lab investigation form is filled and submitted to the EOC with an electronic version of a lab request uh, generated through the system. If the person turns positive, then two processes start. The, the person is isolated and a contact tracing team is put in motion. They list out the contacts, uh, trace them, and follow them up for 14 days for any constitutional symptoms of uh, COVID-19. Certain individuals are required to be on quarantine. We have again have built a system that allows for admission and follow up of individuals on quarantine. Uh, we'll see that later. Then of course, surveillance is about information. So strategic information is part of the solution we are provided. So the steps from 2A all the way to 4 has been automated through uh, uh, OpenMRS and other solutions. So this is generally a simple representation of the architecture. The system we have developed is, uh, we have customized, is uh, hosted at the Emergency Operations Center. And um, it's used generally for, with other systems. So at the national level, we have a lab management information system. All the COVID-19 cases are investigated nationally at nationally designated laboratories that exchange data with the COVID-19 tracking system that we have developed with other partners. Uh, so users at the sub-national level, that is basically the rapid response team, the contact tracers, are able to access the solution remotely through you know, browsers as usual uh, for OpenMRS. And for the purposes of case investigation, contact management, quarantine man service management, and also for, for, for for other services, for reports. Uh, they are able to exchange data with the centralized NMRS, which then is able to push any contact lists to the mobile applications. So we have two of those. The Kenya COVID-19 uh, tracking app is developed under the community uh, health tool that uh, is being used, is being uh, 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 managed by Medic Mobile. And uh, once the contact list is sent to this application, it's able to to be used for contact tracing and follow-up, after which the outcomes of the tracing and follow-up is pushed back to the centralized uh, OpenMRS implementation. There is a second mobile uh, solution developed by mHealth Kenya. Uh, the solution removes the human being from, uh, from monitoring individuals on follow-up by sending them SMSs, and you'll see that in the next uh, set of the presentation. Basically, what happens is that once an individual has been listed as a contact or as a person on quarantine, they receive SMSs every day with an application that they can download and self-report on whether they have symptoms or not. If at all they don't respond in a day, then a provider will then reach out for more structured follow-up. So this is just some screenshots of the community health tool by Medic Mobile. It allows for offline capture and notification of, uh, on suspected COVID cases and for lab investigations. These are summarized in the first two screenshots. They just show um, a, a snapshot of uh, the case investigation form and the laboratory component uh, that uh, is collected in the community. This form is then pushed to the, is synchronized to the OpenMRS COVID-19 tracking system that we have at the national level for further action. The contact tracing can also be done through the app. So this is just as, again, a screenshot showing an individual who has been listed as a, as a contact and a provider therefore is following up. 
the middle screenshot shows you that the follow-up can be done in person or by phone. And uh, when, whenever the person is, then that information can be used for further follow-up and any other investigation required. So this is uh, a video recording. Uh, it can just take one and a half minutes of listening. Then I will conclude in the first, in the, in the next. Hi everyone, my name is Jacob. I work for Palladium, currently supporting the Emergency Operations Center in Kenya on COVID-19 surveillance. Once you log into the Kenya EMR COVID-19 tracking system, you'll be presented with a dashboard on all suspected cases and a cascade that shows the continuum all the way to either recovery or death. You will also be able to view all listed contacts by the type of exposure and the effectiveness of the program in tracing and con uh, following up contacts. We have added uh, a number of apps to help the program to be able to provide services. So the rapid response team app enables the rapid response team to be able to notify the EOC of cases, conduct contact follow-up, lab requests, and also to be able to view the reports that are available. So I'll just proceed and finish off in the next couple of slides. Uh, um, so this, this is an important part to just show that we tried, we anticipate that there are going to be a lot of cases um, uh, over time, and uh, it will not be possible for human you know, providers to be available to be following each and every person individually. So um, M-Health Kenya developed a, a mobile-based uh, solution that uh, allows the, the emergency operations center to, to, to follow up uh, each and every contact that is uh, being listed remotely. So how this happens is that uh, the individual will receive an, an SMS with a link to an app that they can then download. Once they receive the app, every day they, are, they receive a, a message in the morning and in the evening requiring them to report back on whether they have constitutional symptoms. So this is basically what happens. They are asked if they have a thermal gun if they have developed some of the constitutional symptoms, you can just see that listed there. And once they report back, then they are, uh, they, are they, 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 they basically are able to submit the report for a period of 14 days, after which they are, they are let go out of the system. Uh, this is, is, is important because if they do not respond over a period of one day, then now a provider comes in and makes a phone call to inquire whether they are okay or not and can then make a, a physical follow-up where appropriate. For persons who do not have a mobile a smartphone, then there is a USSD uh, component that allows the EOC to get uh, feedback how they're progressing over time. 
It's important to note that the app allows you to tag the location of the person who is reporting back so that you can be sure where they're actually staying and if they are um, adhering to their quarantine plan. So I just want to appreciate um, the other partners who have helped to work together on this.